Hello Internet! Hi Mom, hi Dad, hello family and friends. I know some of you are expecting a harmonica video tonight, but uh, I got to moving my studio from upstairs to downstairs, and it got rather late, and I can't be rocking the house out at, late at night and waking up the neighbors and stuff. So I decided to change it up a little bit. I've been working on my baking skills since uh, lockdowns and stuff like that, and uh, I've been wanting to, for a while, to make another uh, upside down cake. So I thought I'd go through that with you tonight and I uh, hope you enjoy this. We're going to do some talking and some cooking. Alright, let's get busy. I'm going to get my cup of coffee ready here first. That's the most important thing. So I got a cup of coffee here ready. Now I put, I put honey and milk in my coffee all the time and uh, I like the right amount. I put about 20 grams in my cup of coffee. Tastes just about right. If you put too much, it's too sweet and it's nasty. And if it's not enough, it doesn't taste as good. So the right amount of honey in my cup of coffee is really critical. So I like to do it that way. And then a little bit of milk. Off we go. Okay, coffee's ready. Should be able to start here. Mm -hmm. I want to give you a quick tour of our kitchen. Our kitchen's really tiny. We're very happy to be moving because the kitchen in the next house is bigger and that should be a lot nicer for us to work in. This kitchen is so small it's hard for two people to even work in here. As long as we've lived here it's been very difficult for us to be in the kitchen but we're thankful it works. It's a kitchen. We can make food things like that. Let me show you around. Give me a quick tour. There we go over here. Got the layout over there. Got a little cooking space over there. This kitchen is so small that I can't open the refrigerator door and the oven door at the same time without bumping into the island. We always have to slide it back and forth. If I want the fridge door all the way open, I gotta push the island this way. And if I want the oven door all the way open, I gotta open it this way and push push the island that way. So that's our lovely small kitchen here. It's not very big but it sure is tiny and the only thing different uh, today is that it's a lot cleaner than usual. I don't usually clean up before I start. Whatever mess is there I just start working around it and so my cooking style is crash. My cooking apron here. I think I got this from my son. I'm not sure. And you see that uh, I'm wearing my pajamas and I got my white Crocs on. This is my usual kitchen attire. So, on with the recipe. This recipe was taken from BettyCrocker.com. It's a pineapple upside down cake recipe. And uh, I made a pineapple upside down cake about four years ago and dropped it right in the parking lot on the way to <laughs> Mishael and Annette's. And that was fun. We laughed, we cried, but uh, I'm going to be making an apple walnut upside down cake and it's based on the pineapple upside down cake recipe. I got this one at BettyCrocker.com. They're pretty simple, they're a lot of fun. I made a couple last autumn when a friend of mine gave me a big bag of pears out of his garden and uh, so I had a lot of extra pears and I thought of adapting the uh, pineapple upside down cake recipe for that. It worked out really well. So now I've got some apples and I've been telling my wife that I'd like to make uh, another one of these upside down cakes. They're very simple, they're very yummy and they're a lot of fun to make. This is way more organized than usual. It's everything's laid out. Usually I just kind of start and kind of do it as I go and it's a total mess and all of that. But let's get busy here. So the first thing it says to preheat my oven to 350 Fahrenheit. Well, this is already a problem for me because my oven is labeled in centigrade. So I have to ask Mr. Google and he said to set my oven at 176. Then it says I need a 9 inch square pan. Well, I don't have one of those because most all of our cooking equipment is in boxes at our new house. This is, our kitchen's a little stripped down right now, just the bare essentials. But I got some kind of glass pan right here I'm going to use. 
So, I need a quarter cup of butter, and this brings up the next problem. Uh, we've got measuring cups and whatnot, but I generally take all my ingredients and transfer them all over into grams when I start. It just makes life simple. We use a scale, and it just makes life really easy. So I've measured out 60 grams of butter, which is a quarter cup. And we're going to put that in the oven, let it melt. Looks good. All right, so next it says to put in 2 thirds cup brown sugar, about 120 grams. Sprinkled in there. Okay, then we layer in some sliced apples. Just going to fill that in to cover the bottom. I cut up about two, two and a half apples. And then some walnuts. I got about a three quarters cup of walnuts, whole walnuts. Just sprinkle those in. Spread evenly around. There we go. Alright, so next, in a medium bowl, beat remaining ingredients with an electric mixer on low speed for 30 seconds, scraping bowl constantly. Remaining ingredients are, I've got 220 grams of flour here, and it's very interesting, the Germans sell their flour by the grade of grit, and so this is type 405. Standard flour over here is 405. And then we got 200 and I got 230 grams of sugar and 80 grams of soft shortening. Over in America we got Crisco and over here we got Palmin. We got one and a half teaspoons of Bockpover baking powder. And it goes in. Half teaspoon of salt. Three quarters cup milk. And one egg. There we go. All right, I'm gonna start beating that up. On low for 30 seconds, and on high for on high for three minutes. Okay, then we pour our batter over the apples. All right, that's ready to go right in the oven. And it says to bake at 50 to 55 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center comes out clean. So we got a little bit of time to chat. The movie's going very well over here, thank you. And uh, Germany, of course, is in uh, second lockdown right now. Barbershops are closed, hardware stores are still closed. Things are pretty tough all over. My wife and I are currently in quarantine because my wife tested positive last week for corona. She's fine and she's not showing any symptoms, but we have to stay in quarantine until the 17th of January, which is interesting because we're supposed to be moved out by the 15th of January. Now our current landlord has said it's okay if we stay a little bit longer, so we're covered there. We don't really have any problems there. And so I'm gonna get a corona test in a couple more days and they'll tell me if I'm positive or not. I certainly have no symptoms, and I'm certainly feeling really good, and things are going just fine. And the move is on hold, but most things have already been moved. We're just kind of in a holding pattern for now, so it's working out. And so, thank you all for prayers and support, and we really appreciate it. But uh, things are fine here, no cause for worry, no cause for alarm, and I'll let you know how that's going as we progress. All right, cake's almost done. Can you smell that? Mmm, getting there. All right, so let me take a toothpick here and test our cake, see how it's looking. Well, that says clean. 
All right, I'm gonna pull it out. Oh yeah. All right, here we go. Expert tips. The cake needs to be turned out of the pan shortly after it's removed from the oven or the fruit will stick. Be armed with hot pads and a cake plate or board. All right, well, I need a big long plate. Don't really have one. Let's try this. I've often thought of starting a kitchen show called Disaster Kitchen because that's how it would turn out with me. It's just a comedy of errors with me in the kitchen most of the time. So, all right, we got two hot pads. I don't have a long cake plate. All our stuff's at the other house, most of it. So I'm gonna go like this. I've got a larger glass pan at least. Disaster kitchen. There we go, oh, that looks pretty good. I love these upside down cakes. The, the syrup just drips all over everything. And it's really yummy. I probably should have thought to uh, add some cinnamon to it, but I'm sure it's quite yummy the way it is. The way I make it, it, it ends up being more like a cobbler. <laughs> Didn't stay together too well here on the sides. And I, it doesn't matter, you just scoop it out, you put it in a bowl. Should be good. All right, I'm gonna call that good for now. Let me take a taste. Oh yeah, it's hot. Mmm. But with that combination of ingredients, what could possibly go wrong? Oh, it's really yummy. I'm gonna enjoy some of this while I'm editing this video down. And I'm gonna call it a night. It's 3 a.m. And I still gotta wrap this editing up. All right, folks. Good night, Internet. Have a wonderful and blessed day. We'll see you again. Bye-bye now.